Right, good morning, uh, or afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are. A little while ago, Tom talked to me about doing a little video on the planer, the fitness planer. Um, as a, I guess as a follow-on from the tips and tricks of a jointer. So there are a number of things that you know you can do with with a fitness planer um, that is not normally shown or talked about. So what I'm using, um, I have a, um, a 20 inch fitness planer. And the reason I got that um, is because I like to be able to do a whole side. So if I'm making up a cabinet, I can glue up the sides, I can glue it up oversize and then take it down to final thickness um, through the through thickness plane. Okay, so that's why I like a big planer. Um, if I'm gluing up a tabletop, I can glue up the tabletop in three sections, uh, plane them to thickness, and then I've only got two joints to worry about um, to get level. So that's probably my first tip, you know. If you've got something that's a finished size, will be big enough to fit for your fitness planer. Mill it slightly oversized, then take it down to final thickness through your fitness planer. Now another common mistake I see people making with a fitness planer is trying to take too much off each pass. You know, uh, that machine is 5 horsepower, and they say you can take off 3 mil at a time. To be perfectly honest, taking off three mil is too much, it's too hard on your equipment. Um, I would normally only take half a mil off at a time. Um, it's better to make a few shallow passes than one great big pass. The other thing is that you'll find that they'll have a speed. You know, um, a fast speed for softwoods and a slower speed for hardwoods. Personally, I leave it on the slower speed because even with a softwood, well, especially with a softwood, um, yeah, the slower pass, it gives you a smoother finish. I'm not going to tell you how to set one up because everybody's fitness planer will be different. You know, whether it's a bench top or, yeah, a standalone model. The other thing, too, as I see people not doing is, you know, they're uh, always have it locked when I'm passing something through the machine. Okay, it's safer, um, it, it's just good practice. The other thing that I do is that, uh, yeah, I always switch off at the wall. I never just switch off the machine and leave it turned on at the wall. Once I'm, I've finished working on my machine, I always switch it off at the wall. It just seems um, safer, you know, your lightning strike, anything else like that. Um, if it's switched off at the wall, you know it's safe. So, you know, maintenance of it, you know, greaser chains, this one's chain driven underneath, put the oil in when you need it, um, keep your blades sharp. Um, actually in the jointer tips and tricks I show a little jig that I use for uh, jointer blades um, I can also use those for my planer blades just to give them a touch up you know, if you put a nick in them yeah, um, you generally have to go and take them to a saw doctor and get them properly done which is really expensive on a 20 inch blade um, so I try to touch them up myself Actually, I just saw a video from Bill Nee, um, and he has got the most perfect little fixture for doing um, planer blades. So I'd suggest you look that one up. Okay, let's get into the wooden aspect of it. Okay, wood. We use it all the time. But 
you know, there's a number of things we want to know before we put it through. Normally, before you even put it over a jointer, so they've got, you know, a flat and a 90 degree um, edge, I will look at it. Especially on, you know, this is some um, very old coarse grain. Um, you can see the direction of the grain quite clearly. And um, so on that, I'll mark an, an arrow on the two edges. That shows me what direction the grain's moving. Okay, you swap it over and often, uh, uh, depending on how it's being milled, this one's actually pretty much straight cut, so the grain is still running the same way. But on some, if the, if the grain here is at an angle, then that side the grain may be going that way but on that side the grain may be going that way so you know take the time to mark your boards up so you know exactly which way the grain is going and then feed in with the grain that way you shouldn't get tear out you know if your blades are sharp you know you shouldn't get tear out you shouldn't have any problems you know feeding it through. You know, so often I'll see people and they're just feeding through in the same place every time. Let me just, just, the, um, you know, they'll feed it through, through, through. All it's doing is blunting your blade. So ideally, you start there, the next one there, the next one there, the next one there, the next one there. Try to work your whole blade. Um, not only does it make your blades last longer before you have to take them out, but they will wear more evenly. The other thing too uh, I see people do a lot of is they'll only do the broad side. They won't actually turn it up often and do the top. And, you know, that gives you a better finish than doing with a saw blade. Um, so I, I will always do that. I will do tops as well as the sides. And you often hear people say, well, you know, you get onto a thin board, a 20 mil board, a three quarter board, well, you know, you can't edge joint on one of these. You can. You can put a 20 mil board on its edge through the jointer. And if you're a little bit worried that it might tip over, put three or four of them together. So gang them together and put them through as one piece. So that's a, a, a lot quicker way of doing it as well. Now, I think I also said to you that with um, yeah, there are times when you have a wide board, like, because of my shop size here, I only have a 6 inch jointer. And generally I can join a 10 inch board on that quite satisfactorily. But if I'm concerned about, you know, just how level and flat I'm getting it before I put it through the thickness planer um, to dimension it to its final size, and I can't show you because I cut it up and used it for a jig the other day. But I like to use melamine. Um, which is a nice slippery surface. Get yourself a nice big piece of melamine. And put a cleat on the front edge. Then sit that on your thickness plane so it goes right through your thickness plane. The cleat's going to stop it sliding through. Make sure you leave a gap on the edge that you need to. Because if you've jointed a 10 inch board, okay, if you've jointed a 10 inch board, uh, you'll have that jointed and then you'll have a little bit left over where it hasn't been jointed. Okay, so you'll have a step 
Well, it should have the step there like that. Okay, so put the flat that you just jointed, so it's the sort of a melamine, and the bit that you haven't been able to join hangs loose and that's lifted up. You can then run your board right through the thickness planer and that'll get the, get the opposite flat nice and smooth. Then you can flip it over and take off the bit that you can get with the jointer and bring it back to dead flat. That's quite a quick and easy way to do it. So, use your jointer, uh, um, get everything ready, put it through your thickness planer, watch your grain, make sure that you're moving from side to side so you're using all your blade, don't take off too much in one pass, you know, half a mil is more than enough at a time, and, you know, when you've roughed it down on your table saw for the final width, flip it up on its edge, put it back through the planer, down to final size. That way, you know, if you're doing you know, a large number of pieces, you know they're all the same thickness, and it's a smooth edge ready for sanding, ready to finish. You know, sorry, but I don't get what they say. You know, a table saw is never going to get you a good, a, a, a smoother edge as say your thickness planer will. Okay, I think that's about it. it really isn't a lot um, on, the, on the thickness planer. Um, and there will be another video coming out shortly. I've been asked to do something for Anzac Day, which is a Veterans Day here in New Zealand. Uh, Anzac for Australian and New Zealand Forces. And so I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a small, easy project that would be suitable for that. Okay, see you next time.